People who run marathons absolutely amaze me. Day in and day out, they lace up their running shoes. Then they, they step out onto the track or on the road and they put the miles in. And it's, it's not a glamorous or an easy process. In fact, I can't imagine doing it every day. There are mornings when their muscles ache, when they'd rather stay in bed, but they know that skipping a single day could lead to skipping another day. It's kind of like missing meetings, right? You skip one day, then you know, next thing you know, you're skipping more. They, they track their progress. They measure their heart rate. Have you ever seen a runner doing this? They're not looking at the time. They're checking, and they're, they got their hand here. They assess their form. They adjust whatever they need to do if they notice a weakness. And, and they don't wait until a week before the marathon to start preparing. The training is an ongoing daily process. A long-distance runner understands that discipline and cons consistency are the key. Small, repeated efforts over time build the endurance that they need to finish the race well. Step 10 encourages you and I to practice discipline and consistency in our spiritual and emotional lives. Taking a personal inventory regularly is like an athlete that's assessing their training. It's not a one-time effort, but it's a daily habit. And when we identify an area of weakness or when we stumble, because sometimes we do, it's essential to make the, ascent, the necessary adjustments right away. And just as the athlete doesn't wait until the race day to realize that they're unprepared, we can't afford to delay admitting our wrongs and making amends. Our spiritual growth requires the same kind of commitment to discipline and self-awareness. Now, in the same way that an athlete takes time to evaluate their training progress, we must adopt the same intentionality in applying step 10 to our lives. This involves a daily review of our thoughts, our actions, and attitudes, and looking honestly at where we have fallen short. And, and like the athlete who corrects their form to avoid injury or to en enhance their performance, we must promptly admit when we're wrong, and we need to take action and make it right. And this process keeps us spiritually fit, and it keeps us emotionally whole. Just as an athlete's daily discipline prepares them for a long race. And through consistent self-examination and immediate correction, we build endurance to continue our journey in recovery. We grow stronger with every single step. We've arrived at step 10. We continue to take personal inventory. And when we are wrong, we promptly admit it, and then we make amends. Step 10 is the step of developing discipline and consistency. And when you continue to do something, it becomes a habit. This important step is all about making self-reflection and personal accountability a way of life rather than just simply an occasional occurrence. You know, King David, I talk about King, I talk, you know, I realized when I was writing this message, I talk about David a lot. Um, but he is a great example of a biblical character who practiced daily personal evaluation. David's life is full of instances where he reflects on his actions, he seeks God's guidance, and he acknowledges his shortcomings and then commits to making things right. Despite being described as a man after God's own heart, David struggled with lots of character defects and shortcomings, which at times led to his sin. And, and here's a list of, of some of his key character defects. It, it should make you feel a little better about yourself. He struggled with lust. His lust caused him to commit adultery with Bathsheba, a woman who was married to another man. He was deceitful, and he lacked transparency. He covered up Bathsheba's pregnancy and, and arranged for the death of her husband, Uriah. He was passive. Now, I know some of you may say, well, passivity, is, is that a sin? It really can be. When it came to properly disciplining his sons, some of you parents need to hear that, <laughs> especially in the case 
of Amnon's rape of Tamar. That was a great example. And he also struggled with something that I think a lot of us struggle with, pride. He ordered a census of Israel to encounter all of his military forces, and this was motivated by pride rather than faith, which ultimately led to God's judgment. He struggled with selfishness, and he struggled with covetousness. Um, not only did he lust after Uriah's wife, but he coveted her. He wanted to have her for his own. And he even struggled with fear of rejection. Anybody struggle with fear of rejection? Yeah. However, he wanted to be in right relationship with God and others, so he developed the consistent daily habit of taking a personal inventory. So those are just some of the things. I think he probably struggled with a number of other issues. I think he drank too much as well. Now, tonight, I'm going to share how you can develop discipline and consistency by using five practical steps to complete a personal daily inventory. These steps align with King, King David's approach that he, frankly, he talks about in the, in the psalm. So let's get started. First thing I want you to do is go ahead and open up your, your handy-dandy bulletin. Let's get out the... Uh, the outline, if you didn't receive an outline, do me a favor, raise your hands. Our ushers will bring you one. Who doesn't have one? There's several of you. So keep your hands up so that they can find you easily, and they will get those to you right now. All right. The first step in your daily inventory is start the day with prayer and reflection. Start your day with prayer and reflection. David often began his prayers by seeking God's insight into his heart and in his life. Listen to Psalm 139, 23 through 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Ask God to search your heart and reveal areas that need correction. Only God knows your true motives, and He can guide you in the path of, of righteousness. Beginning your day with prayer and reflection sets the tone for a spiritually aware life and, and, and a spiritually aware day. How many of you know that if you miss prayer, things don't go right? Yeah. By opening your heart to God first thing in the morning, you invite Him to guide your thoughts and your actions throughout the day. It's essential to acknowledge that your, your own understanding is extremely limited. And, and you need God's insight to help you live in alignment with His will for your life. And when you pray, ask God to reveal any potential areas where you may fall short during the day. Pray for a heart that remains soft and, and sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompt, promptings. And so that you can quickly recognize that you maybe have reacted harshly in some circumstance or you offended someone. Prayer can also develop humility, reminding you that a, living a godly life is not possible under your own strength. Listen to Philippians 4, 6. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank Him for all He's done. Start every day with a conversation with God. Express your needs and then thank Him in advance for His guidance. Then in the evening, here's the next step. Review your day. End your day with reflection. David frequently reflected on his actions and how he behaved. In Psalm 139, David asked God to test his thoughts and reveal any offensive ways in him. This is an example of reviewing daily events and interactions to see where er, there, if there were areas where, that were contrary to God's will. Psalm 77, 6 also reflects this. It says, I search my soul and I ponder the difference now. David regularly looked on his behavior and actions, and he searched for the areas where he might have gone wrong. Any of you when you look on your day, you go, holy smokes, I was wrong several different places. Okay. And if you struggle, by the way, if, if, if you don't see those things, 
then invite the Holy Spirit to reveal them. At the end of the day, take time to reflect on the day's events, the interactions, the emotions. This is where you actively take inventory of how you behaved and how you reacted in different situations. Were, were there moments during the day that you lost your temper? Did you judge somebody unfairly? Uh, did you act selfishly? Did you choose peace over confrontation? Or did you let pride or anger guide your actions? But by reviewing your day, you gain insight into patterns of behavior. You, you find good things and some bad things. Reflection gives you the opportunity to recognize if there's any unconfessed or unresolved conflict that you need to address. It's important to be honest with yourself and because, it, because it's easy to overlook a misstep during the day. Then, acknowledge and own your shortcomings. Acknowledge it. Own it. David didn't shy away from identifying where he sinned. In fact, he, uh, in Psalm 51, written after his sin with Bathsheba was exposed, he says this. He says, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you, you alone, I have sinned. I've done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is just. This passage is emphasizes David's awareness of his own wrongdoing and his acknowledgement that at, ultimately all sin is against God. It's a profound example of how you and I must acknowledge and own our shortcomings. David clearly identifies and owns his wrongdoing and understands that he has fallen short, acknowledging not only the obvious offenses but also any hidden faults. Psalm 19, 12 says this, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart cleanse me from these hidden faults? Isn't that a powerful scripture? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. This step, it's all about recognizing areas that you may have sinned or harmed others, even unintentionally. And self-justification it can cloud your understanding of what's right and wrong. But the Bible teaches that sin includes not only the wrong things that you've done, but also the good things that you fail to do. A good reminder is James 4, 17. It says, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Sometimes a wrongdoing can be very subtle. A critical comment, impatience, selfish selfish motives, um, things that you don't notice at first glance. It requires humility and knowledge or you've stumbled, even in small ways. And this step is about looking beyond obvious offenses and asking God to reveal the hidden sins and the wrong attitudes that you may have had that could hinder your spiritual growth or harm others. And then here's the fourth step. Seek God's forgiveness and guidance for change. God's heart of repentance is especially seen in Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Listen to these words. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. David asks for both transformation and forgiveness, showing his desire and to change and to live according to God's will. He doesn't just seek to be forgiven, but he asks God to guide him in making lasting change in his behavior. Listen, that's what we're looking for here. We're, we're, not, we're not looking for a short-term fix. We're looking for long-term change in our behavior. And once you've identified your shortcomings, the next step is you need to seek forgiveness from God. Confession is an important part of maintaining a, a healthy relationship with Jesus. Acknowledging where you've gone wrong and asking for forgiveness clears the slate and it allows you to start fresh. 1 John 1, 9 is a very familiar passage. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's promise is that he will cleanse you 
from the unrighteousness when you confess. Beyond forgiveness, you also need guidance. You need guidance to change. And true repentance isn't just about feeling bad about what you've done. Listen, people have heard way too many I'm sorry's. It's not, it's not feeling bad. It's about seeking a new path. Ask God for wisdom on how to avoid repeating the same mistakes. And whether it's controlling your temper. Anybody have bad temper in this room? Yeah. yeah about 98% of you. Um, how about people who are impatient? Anybody impatient? Yeah. How about be, being more self-serving than serving others? Anybody do that? Yeah. Seek God's guidance and ask Him to change you from the inside out. Psalm 32, 8 says this. He says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I'll watch over you. Which brings us to the last step of the five practical steps of a daily inventory. And that is commit to making things right. David understood the importance of reconciliation and making things right, both with God and with others. In 2 Samuel 12, after Nathan the prophet confronted him about his sin with Bathsheba, David took steps to repent and then face the consequences of his actions. He didn't make excuses. He didn't try to avoid accountability. In Psalm 32, 5, he declares, finally, I confessed all my sins to you and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. His heart of repentance, it led him to make things right by confessing to God and accepting the consequences of his actions. You know, sometimes, sometimes there's going to be some serious consequences to your actions. Sometimes you're going to have to go face a judge, right? Sometimes you're going to have to go to the people who you've harmed the most and, and seek forgiveness and, and try to make amends. And sometimes you can't make things right, can you? But you can at least acknowledge and try. Self-reflection is incomplete if it doesn't lead to action. And after seeking forgiveness from God, it's time to make things right with others. This could involve offering an apology, mending a broken relationship, or taking practical steps to correct any damage that you've done. Delaying or avoiding making amends allows unresolved situations to fester. It damages relationships and it hinders your spiritual growth. You know, Jesus has a wonderful teaching in Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 24, and it shows the importance of making things right. Listen to these words. So if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift, even if you're worshiping at the altar. You know, for example, if you're here and you're raising your hands and, and worshiping the Lord and, and all of a sudden you're convicted that there's somebody that you need to make, a, make an amends to, you, you may, if you go running down the, down the middle of the, 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 the aisle there, I'll know what you're doing. You're either going to the bathroom or you're trying to make things right. Right? And that's how important it is. This means taking an initiative to approach someone that you've wronged and seek their forgiveness, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's difficult. You know, spiritual growth doesn't happen overnight. It, it requires daily consistency and discipline. And just like an athlete who tra trains day in and day out, constantly assessing their progress, making necessary adjustments, you must commit to the process of daily self-examination. That's what step 10 is all about. Consistently taking a daily personal inventory helps you to develop a clear conscience and it strengthens your re relationship with God and it allows you to live in harmony with others. You might have remembered my message a while back about, I had one about peace and one about harmony. 
1 Timothy 1.19 says this. It says, cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. You and I cannot afford to, to ignore where we've fallen short, and we must act swiftly when we recognize that we've done something wrong. This is why I love step 10. Um, it's one of those, those steps where instead of kicking, kicking the can down the road, we, we make it right immediately so that we don't have resentments, people don't have resentments against us, we make it right. And so I want to urge you to begin implementing these five steps into your daily routine. Here's a little bit of review. First, start your day with prayer and reflection. Before you engage to, in any of the busyness of life, ask God to search your heart and reveal any areas of weakness or potential stumbling. Invite Him to guide your steps and keep you sensitive to His will. Then, review your day. Just as King David did, reflect on your thoughts, your actions, your interactions. Where, were you patient? Were you loving? Did you act in line with God's Word? And where did you fall short? Just be honest with yourself. And then acknowledge and own your shortcomings. Don't shy away from the truth. Recognize your faults, whether they're obvious or they're hidden. Remember, your goal is growth, not perfection. And when you admit where you've gone wrong, you open the door for healing. And then seek God's forgiveness and guidance. God's grace is always available. Ask Him to cleanse your heart. Ask Him to renew your spirit, guiding you toward lasting change. He is faithful, and He'll help you overcome your struggles that you face. And finally, commit to making things right. Whether it's with God or it's with others, don't delay in taking the steps to make amends. Reconciliation is a powerful testimony of God's grace that's at work in your life. And when you clear the air, You'll restore relationships, and you'll continue growing in Christ, and your recovery will grow. And as you consistently practice these steps, you'll find that your heart becomes more aligned with God's will, and your spiritual endurance will grow. And just like that athlete who perseveres in their training, your commitment to completing a daily inventory will strengthen you for your recovery journey. Remember, this race is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Commit to developing the discipline and consistency needed to practice step 10 every single day. Allow God to transform you into the person that He has called you to be. He's called you to be clear in conscience, strong in faith, and walking in His truth. And when you do, you'll be one step closer to being forever free.